Welcome to our video series on NFP820. Today we are going to discuss the most important aspect of fire pump operation that is fire pump settings. So what exactly are these settings? Well, they are the key parameters that determine the pressure at which a fire pump operates. See, we have received some questions on how to determine proper pressure settings for starting and stopping the pressure maintenance jockey pumps and fire pumps which is required for an effective system operation. So remember before we attempt to determine the pressure settings for an FPA20, we need to fetch the data related to the selected fire pump. Manufacturer will not provide factory preset settings, however these settings can be adjusted from pump controller at project site so we could potentially increase or decrease the range based on our requirement. Let's go ahead and start determining the stop and start pressures of fire pump. Let us consider one example with selected fire pump having capacity of 1000 GPM at 100 PSI with a churn pressure of 115 PSI. Also it has static pressure available at pump section is 50 PSI. Based on this we are going to determine the pressure settings for this particular pump. So the first step is not to determine the start and stop pressure of fire pumps. Yes, to understand the concept, you have to watch the full video, otherwise you will be lost. So the first step will be knowing the maximum pump pressure at zero flow or churn condition, which will be calculated by adding the pump churn pressure with maximum suction pressure. So we already have the data. 115 PSI plus 50 PSI which will comes about 165 PSI. So the first step is finished. Now going back to the second step we need to determine the jockey stop pressure. Jockey stop pressure should equal the fire pump churn pressure plus minimum static suction supply pressure. We already have all the data with us so 115 PSI plus 50 PSI comes about 165 PSI. So after calculating the stop pressure and start pressure of the jockey, we are moving ahead with the third step. So the third step is to calculate the start pressure of the jockey pump. So the jockey pump start pressure will be jockey stop pressure minus 10 PSI at least. So from the data 165 PSI minus 10 PSI, we will get 155 PSI. The fourth step is very very important is to calculate the fire pump start pressure or electric main fire water pump start pressure. So it should be 5 psi below the jockey start pressure. So 155 psi minus 5 psi will be 150 psi. Fifth step will be calculating the start pressure for the diesel fire pump. So if we have additional fire pump, then we will reduce 10 PSI from the main fire pump start pressure. As you can see on your screen, additional fire pump start pressure will be main fire pump start pressure minus 10 PSI. So we will be getting about 140 PSI based on the data available with us. So this is the summary. But wait, we need to know additional details to put the stop pressure. So as per NFPA 20, we have additional pump settings. In some cases, we can set the fire pumps to shut off automatically. However, if the fire pump is the sole water supply, the pump can only be set to manual stop. So this is the most important point. Also many fire departments and insurers recommend manual stop settings. So this is the ultimate pressure settings which needs to be adjusted in fire pump controller during site testing commissioning works.